welcome to my garden. Time for another bi-weekly garden update. It is Mother's Day. It is May 13th. And I just thought I'd bring you out and give you an update, give you a little look around. I have people call, you know, leave me messages all the time. Please do another garden update. And I'm, they didn't, I don't know if they want me to be out here every day, but I think that's kind of pointless. But, but there's, you know, here's the deck stuff. Look, my lilies opened up. You know what? I like to buy these off of the clearance rack. Like these are from last year. I have more in the garden as well. I like to buy these on the clearance rack because they always come back every single year. Stevia is doing great. Everything is really, look at this valerian. This thing is really starting to come in. You know, when I bought it, it was really small and it's really starting to grow. I'm so excited. So, we'll come down here. We finally got this blackberry bush in the box. So Rick built the box and yesterday we finally planted it. It's got all sorts of new berries coming in on it. Look. Look at that. All kinds. It'll only be a matter of time before we're actually picking berries off of this thing. I'm so excited about that. And let's see. Last week we had a great rain. I mean, it, it like poured down in buckets out of the sky. The next morning I came out to check the garden, but this hadn't fallen. Later in the morning I looked out my kitchen window and this was laying in the yard. It decided that it couldn't it couldn't stay in the tree anymore. I don't even know where it came from. We can't figure it out. So, you know, it's just one of those things. It got so wet and heavy that it just came right down. Now, <clears throat> let's take you over here and have a look at this peach tree because it is just fantastic. Okay, now, look. And I've got so much stuff in front of it. <laughs> look it. Look it. I am going to have a few peaches this year anyway. Um, we'll see what happens. I think, you know, the older the tree gets, the more fruit it's going to bear, and uh, the happier we'll all be. I think my hydrangeas are coming in. And this is a hibiscus, and it will soon be bearing some beautiful hot pink blooms. I have some Shasta daisies that are coming in. Another hydrangea. Again, all of these bought off the clearance rack. I just love doing that. Look at this. This is my wormwood. That is taken off like a shot. I think I'm going to go ahead and put that in the ground soon too. And this chamomile, before I know it, I'm going to have blooms on it. It's going to be beautiful. Oh, I'm not aiming the camera very well, am I? I'm sorry. Let's take you inside. Now, look at my squash. And the... Look. I've got lots of squash coming on. Look at that. Yellow squash always comes in first. And I've got all this is yellow squash from here on, and then back over here is the zucchini. That's the same. We've got lots of blossoms. But I also have cabbage moths flying around, and I absolutely hate that. So what you see, this white, is diaper dust. I have um, spread, sprinkled liberally, and I need to do it again because I just watered real heavy this afternoon. Fig tree. Look at these tomatoes. They are just growing like gangbusters. There's our German Johnsons. These are all lemon boys down here. Here's my pear tree. And since, you know, this is my first time growing the fruit trees, we'll, uh, we'll have a learning curve there as well. Here's our rhubarb. And all of our, these are all Cherokee purple tomatoes in this box and they're really really doing well 
that one can go. And I love these boxes because it just, it takes no time and no effort at all. These are Romas in here. And these down here that you see coming in, uh, aside from some of the clover, but these here are marigolds because I love to plant marigolds along with my tomatoes. As well as borage, I plant borage in here too. These here are brandy wines. They're just getting big and tall and I'm really, really pleased. This here is a volunteer mammoth dill. And this is already starting to get a seed head in here. Oh, I love dill. It's absolutely, mm. we'll be using that in some pickles. Peppers, um, these are giant Marconis. And then when they're small like this and you see the, um, the flowers start to come on, you need to pull them off because you want these to concentrate on growing foliage and not fruit. When they get bigger, then you will grow fruit. And Spooky is on the other side of my fence whining at me. These here are grape tomatoes. And pulling off these flowers. I don't want tomatoes quite yet. Probably the next set of blossoms. See, you just have to pinch them off. You want your tomato plant to get nice and big before, and even, you know, the peppers, the tomatoes. I pull, these, these down here are jalapeno plants. And, you know, they're really healthy and they're starting to put flowers on. I don't want to grow peppers yet. Not quite yet. Because if you don't let these plants grow, they won't get big. I've actually, in the past, have jalapeno plants get to be the size of trees and get as tall as me. And, uh, and they bear a ton of fruit when they're like that. Here is my, one of my comfrey. Look, look, it's got new flowers on it. Isn't that beautiful? Look at that. Okay, and the raspberries are going nutso. Look at these are suckers, and I'm just going to leave them there. And everything in the box. There's red raspberries and yellow raspberries, and I think there's a black raspberry in here. But uh, time will tell. <laughs> I can't remember. These I actually got off the clearance table at Walmart, and I got them two years ago. And these raspberry canes were sad little things. I honestly didn't expect them to grow, but look at them now. It just goes to show you with a little determination and a little TLC exactly what you can get out of it. And you don't have to spend a whole lot of money to get a good, a good result. Broccoli, cauliflower, I've got a few cabbages in here. They're starting to head up and um, everything's looking really, really good. Here's some King Arthur peppers. This is a variety I grew last year, and I absolutely love them. They like were incredibly prolific. And here's strawberries, which um, I'm kind of uh, hoping that they'll fill in the box here, but I'm not having much luck. And this, this here is volunteer mustard, it is going to flower. And these are actually very beautiful. Um, and I'm going to let it go to seed and probably let it seed itself. Here are some uh, flowering chives and I'm going to let those seed into that pot with the apple tree. And as you can see, these apple trees are doing really well. Here's uh, Pardon the Dogs. These are more peppers. I've got sweet pe bananas and hot bananas. And here's cucumbers, and they're growing really nicely. And more peppers. I am the pepper queen after all. Hey! More peppers. This whole box is broccoli. And this is our little watermelon experiment. Starting to vine, starting to creep out. I don't know what we're gonna what we're gonna end up with, but uh, 
it'll be what it'll be. Our cutting celery is going to seed and I really need to cut it back. And I have a ton of oregano, as you can see. I've already pulled a bunch out of here and I hung it in my kitchen to dry, so I will not be at a loss for, um, for oregano this year, that's for sure. Lettuce, I've got some romaine. And I had planted some spinach seeds, which are just starting to come up now. And they're back there. These are all heads of romaine that I started and then planted individually. So um, we'll see if I get some lettuce before it gets too hot. I can eat this now if I want to. I can pull these and they'll be really tasty baby greens. But um, everything's looking really special and excellent out here now. So... I really couldn't ask for more. This is this is the hard time in gardening when you're kind of you're starting to see great results, but uh, but you're not uh, you're not ready to pick anything quite yet. Down in here, unfortunately, <laughs> I've got I've got basil and chives growing in here because I planted them nice and neatly separate. But like I said last Saturday, we had this torrential rain and this box got full of water and I'm very, very certain that those seeds got all intermingled. And as you can see, uh, there they are. They're all starting to come up and those are little baby chives that you see in there with the basil. And I'm fairly certain those are chives. Let's see. Yep. Those are chives. <laughs> All right, that should do it for our little gardener update this week. I bought two, oh, I wanted to tell you about this. First of all, look at my hollyhocks. These things are fabulous. Look at, look at. You know, how can you not resist a beautiful flower? I just love it. Look at this, it has a whole ton of blooms on it. Look in there. I don't know if you can see that. You see the bumblebee in there? Fantastic. All right. I have my, this is that mulberry tree that planted itself. Well, we had a bird plant it last year. Now the other day, and this actually, has there's some berries on here and mulberries are delicious and for anybody who has mulberries in their area there's a short time span where they actually bear fruit and if you're fortunate enough to have the opportunity to pick enough to make some jam or to eat out of hand they're a fabulous treat now my friend Cat's Cradle's daughter Prepper A did her guilty pleasure video in response to Aunt Daddy's 500 sub contest and she was showing this mulberry tree that was just on the border of where her mama lets her go and doesn't like her to wander beyond and I was seeing was loaded with fruit and I was thinking wow I hope that they're eating that and not letting it just go to waste if they're able to pick that fruit so I also wanted to let them know that, that it's totally edible and it's one of those wild edible things, but I'm sure that Palette and Prepper is on top of that and knows completely that those are edible. But the other thing I wanted to tell her, she said one of her guilty pleasures was that she had planted a dogwood tree in their front yard and and the dogwood was um, their state tree. The dogwood is the state tree where I live also, which is North Carolina. And, um, and now, little known fact, dogwoods are actually some varieties of dogwood actually produce a fruit that is edible so by saying that you planted a, a tree that didn't produce anything to eat may not entirely be correct so you might want to try looking into the variety after those dogwoods are mature sometimes they will produce a little red fruit and it's completely edible so okay there's the dogs tallies inside Here's the blueberries, and this blueberry happens to have a ton of fruit on it. Look at, look at that. 
and we're waiting for those things to ripen. They're really hard and sour right now. Ask me how I know, because I tried. <laughs> so, you know, it is what it is, right? And I'm gonna take you over here really quick and I'm gonna show you my lemon tree because I'm so happy. Look, look at that. Isn't it beautiful? There's one and there's two and there's, where are you, hello? There's three, four. There's a reason why uh, Rick is the one who does the camera work. There's five. I know there's more. Here's six. Yay! Now, we've got kumquats and a nectarine tree, too, but we'll have to see what happens with those. Okay, that's it for this week. I'll probably be back again in a week's time. And uh, until next time, have a great week. Sammy! Say bye. Say, we'll see ya. We'll see ya.